and that is the brand new 2012 Honda Civic Si. This is the ninth generation Honda Civic and this is their new Si high performance model. And notably important about this car is a new 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. Basically the same engine used in the TSX. It's got a lot more torque, a little bit more horsepower. It really is a compelling driver's car. Because we know that anybody who's interested in buying a new SI would be interested in all the nitty gritty specs. So let's have it. This is the 2.4 liter engine. It makes 201 horsepower, which is exactly four horsepower more than the old model, but it does that at 7,000 RPM, which is 800 RPM lower. But the real improvement is torque. We're talking about a 22% increase in torque. Now, you never get 22% increase in power in pretty much any vehicle. So that's an impressive number all on its own. Uh, but the power comes on, the full torque, as opposed to being at 6,900 RPM like it used to be, it's now at just 4,300 RPM. So uh, it's a much more usable car, and we really felt it when driving the autocross earlier in second gear. You know, you've always got the power going. Style-wise, the coupe is more of a departure from the previous generation than the sedan is. It sort of looks uh, longer and sleeker, um, which is nice in some respects, but in other respects, it kind of looks a bit sort of toned down, a bit more feminine than in the past. It is about four tenths of an inch lower to the ground, so that's good for looks and also for handling. Uh, it's got the nice 17-inch wheels, which you expect on a car like this. You can upgrade to you know high-performance tires. Uh, it doesn't really look like it needs a, you know a factory lip kit though, something to really bring the aggression. I mean, there's some nice detailing here on the front. It looks pretty wide and aggressive, but we could really go for a lip kit just to sort of give it the aggression that you know the SI is known for. As we experienced on the autocross and driving around on the regular street, the car is a hoot to drive. Uh, Honda beefed up some other components. Uh, we're talking about some things like front sway bars, a uh, one millimeter thicker, and the rear sway bar is actually four millimeters thicker. And that really helps to deliver the sort of a uh, lift throttle oversteer that front wheel drive cars um, really need. Like previous generation cars, it also comes with a good old fashioned mechanical limited slip differential. We really find when driving this car, even with the traction control on, uh, it really, you know, it doesn't come on very often because the system does such a good job of you know, distributing power to the appropriate wheel that you just don't feel it kick in all that often. Um, and when it does, it, it's actually a pretty sensitive system. It can respond to your reactions and what you want it to do. Um, it, you can get on the power a lot sooner than you can in a lot of other vehicles with uh, similar setups. But perhaps the coolest addition for this year is uh, has to do with the VTEC system. Honda's actually engineered a little light that illuminates when the VTEC system kicks in, so at about 5,500 RPM. Uh, and it actually builds giving uh, you know rev counter lights beyond that with four yellows and then two reds right at the top when it's time to ship. And it's pretty cool. As much fun as the SI is, it's not perfect. And uh, you know, there are a couple of problems. We already talked about how the style can maybe used to be a bit more aggressive to really match the car's character, especially its target audience, which is gonna be young males uh, and always has been. Uh, along with that, um, we could always use more horsepower. I mean, the increases they gave the car, uh, the torque is great, but even just for bragging rights, we'd like, you know, 220, maybe 230 horsepower. And that would really sort of get people going. Um, apart from that, we could really go for a bit more aggression, a louder exhaust note, and particularly the air intake. Uh, it's got some sound, but we could always go for more. What we really love about the car is essentially the packaging as a whole. I mean, it's a lot of fun vehicle. It's a dynamic driver's car. Uh, the steering is great. The brakes are good. Uh, the suspension's really nice. It actually isn't harsh at all like a lot of some tuner cars you, you find on the market. You can add into that whole uh, handling aspect, the limited slip differential. We really like it, and we like that Honda's stuck with the mechanical limited slip differential that just has a great feeling, and you, you really kind of know what you're doing behind the wheel. On top of that, we can be pretty sure that while some people are, especially the tuners, will be upset with the lack of horsepower, they're hoping for more, uh, that they will actually love tuning this car because it will really pick up on power adders that a lot of guys combine this car will add. The 2.4 liter engine, a lot of other cars has already been exploited. Gains are really easy to make compared to some of the previous Honda engines. So, you know, tuners will get a lot of fun out of this package. True, the new SI is not a dramatic step forward for the brand or the car, uh, but it's really because the ninth generation car in general is an evolution of what we've been seeing in the past. Um, and that's because they really were such solid vehicles to begin with. Um, when it comes to a vehicle like the SI, there aren't a lot of competitors left in the segment. And it's not clear if that's from lack of demand or just because cars this good scared people off from really trying to compete uh, at that level. But if you love driving a car that just reacts to your inputs and does what you tell it, you'll find few more rewarding rides than the Civic Si.